Hey, free mind, you crazy for this. Soulful. It's like our responsibility to make us feel something. You know, to make people feel. Make people feel what we feeling. Hey, yo. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today, a show that we do on Wednesday to celebrate the best day of the week. And I just noticed that my graphic is not the correct graphic. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but there we go. Now we have the correct graphic up. Uh, I am a little tardy to the party today, primarily because I was at my boys' football's practice and the coach decided to make things interesting by uh, getting the dads to run sharks and minnows with the kids. So uh, it took me a little bit to recover my wind because it was a little cold out there. And you know how cold air in the lungs is not a good thing. Uh, and so I was running a little late as I was trying to get back here to the house to get myself together. But we are here now and we are going to run things down. I must also apologize. Uh, one of the guests that I wanted to have on the show tonight, uh, we had a scheduling conflict, but he is confirmed for next week. And Patreon members know exactly who it is that I'm talking about. I, I think next week's show is going to be a very special thing. Uh, but we do have one guest that is going to be coming on the show tonight to talk about his comic that has been optioned, been optioned for a TV show. We are going to hear all of the nitty gritty details as to how this actually transpired and potentially it will be an inspirational story for all of us, all of us that have hopes, dreams, and wishes to make magic happen. Uh, above all else, we are going to have a good time. Uh, I am going to go to the chat here in a moment to see what it is that you all may have picked up uh, earlier today at your LCSs. Um, but first, I want to do a giveaway. First, I want to do a giveaway. Last week, we announced, uh, I think I have them here. No, I do not. They are across the room. Uh, we are going to be giving away some Gator Guard cases. Our friends over at Gator Guard hooked me up with three of their acrylic UV protected display cases. And we are going to be giving three of those away tonight. All you had to do to get into the running for this was to watch last week's show and leave a substantive comment behind. Uh, to get a chance to to actually be a winner. And I want to announce the three winners right now. The very first one is Mac Runner Forever. Mac Runner Forever. Fingers crossed you are in the United States. You are one of tonight's winners for the Gator Guard case. Uh, the second person, because we have three of them, the second person is this guy right here. Louis Collectibles, you, sir, uh, are the winner. He says he was unaware of Calico. That was one of the guests that was on the show last week. Uh, not only are you aware of Calico, H.H. German's uh, comic, but you now are a big winner. And the third winner, the third person is Frank. Uh, Frank, I will butcher your last name, so we're just going to say Frank J., all three of you gentlemen, please send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com with your screen name, your government name, and your mailing address, hopefully in the United States, so I can bundle up those Gator Guard cases and get them sent out to you. Uh, appreciate every single person that watched last week's live stream, commented on the video, but we can only have three winners tonight, and it is all three of those people. So there you go. We covered off on that stuff. Um, so let me go to the chat real quick. If you made it out to your LCS and you were able to pick up your comics, I want to know what it is that you picked up. If you read something today that was a good story, a good issue, let us know that as well so we can put that on the top of our reading stacks. And if you want to shout out your LCS, I want to know that. And then lastly, if you picked up some books uh, that are new to you books, I want to know that. I will tell you, I actually had a conversation late last night with an LCS. I watched the replay of somebody's live stream on Instagram, and I was inspired. They had some amazing books up on the wall. They bought 50,000 books, and I'm like, there has to be something here. For me, I saw several books I was really interested in, had a back and forth with them, trying to look at photos and all this kind of stuff, and I was like, hey, what are the prices? They gave me the prices. I said, mm, that looks interesting. Let me do some research. I went and did my research, and basically, long story short, they were pricing all of their raw books at the price of a graded book, I had to bail. I was like, this does not work for me. These numbers 
uh, these numbers do not work. You can, in my opinion, this is my opinion. You cannot sell a raw book for a graded book price. That magic does not compute. Uh, and so I had to take a step away from it. I referenced, of course, uh, my preferred pricing guide for raw books, that being comicspriceguide.com. I also looked at, at other pricing services for graded books so I could figure out what they were doing. And sure enough, they were not anywhere close to a raw book price. They were basically right at the graded book price, which again, just does not work. Uh, I should also mention the comicspriceguide.com also has raw book and graded book, but I like to triangulate. I like to see what's out there. So wanted to make mention of that. If you guys are not familiar with comicspriceguide.com, I definitely want to encourage you to check it out. Huge database, more than 1 million comics on their database. It is out there for you to check out. So, all right, let me go over here real quick and see uh let me see let me see best thing i read today was batman deadly duo great story with fantastic art says chris chris i don't recall ever seeing your name before but welcome welcome to the live stream thank you for contributing to the uh the conversation definitely appreciate it ian says got a steal tonight invincible iron man volume three number three 9.24 15 pounds felt bad it was low market is very soft in the uk it is what it is. It is what it is, man. I mean, you know, the, the the market can't always be bananas, right? And so do not feel bad. That is a great book. Congrats to you. Uh, Dave says, graded prices, raw book. Mm. Yes, sir, indeed. Yes, sir, indeed. Scrolling through. That is a good. I'll tell you, I really wanted these books. I will tell you that uh, there were six of them that I looked at. Three were in a grade that I could rock with. And they happened to be the more expensive ones, of course. And uh, the numbers, the numbers did not compute. I had to bail. Uh, and they were like, yeah, we reference, you know, such and such. And I'm like, well, you, you can't reference that because those are those are graded prices that, that doesn't work for a raw book, you know? So, uh, yeah, we had to bail on that. Uh, got the first super punk in the mail today. So it, it prompted me to redo my shelf, picked up a small stack at the LCS, but mostly most excited to read the next Know Your Station, ASM Ghost Rider and the Red Goblin. The Red Goblin is back, man. The Red Goblin took me by storm. I think it was the end of 2019. I think it was into 2019. We got to look at the Red Goblin. And now fast forward a couple of years, he is back. Uh, I have not read the Red Goblin. I'm guessing it's normie uh but but i'm excited i'm excited to check it out uh picked up what is that daredevil and batman 131 and deadly duel haven't had a chance to read them yet that's what's up uh what is this what is this top top comic peanuts four color number 194 blue beetle 50 captain adam 78 and a couple of more fighting fives that's what's up chuck that is what's up chuck it is always good to see you brother welcome welcome scrolling through um a few a few new books, uh, but better yet, finish my comic book room. That is celebration worthy, sir. That is celebration worthy. Uh, congrats, congrats on making that magic happen. That is all right. Scrolling down uh, through the comments here, picked up uh, ASM 19 cover A, the variant Marvel. No, pro that's a good book. That's a good book, uh, miscellaneous. That's a good book. Laughed out loud when I saw it on the rock. There you go. Scrolling through some of the comments here. Uh, man, you know, the, the, the thing is the comic shop, sir, the comic shop had been in business 30 years. I, I felt I, 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 they were like, yeah, we use so-and-so. My response, I debated my response. I think I ultimately went with, uh, yes, I noticed good luck to you. <laughs> uh, and that was after, I mean, I had typed a couple of messages where it was like, that those are graded book prices. I, I can't rock with that, you know? Um, and I even referenced, Hey, I'm going to look up some pricing services. I'm gonna look up some prices to figure out like how you came up with these numbers. And yeah, they were like, just not, they was not close. It was not close. Seth. Oh, pause, pause. We need to pause. Seth picked up ASM 110 from a great person in the community. Who was this? This wasn't me, was it? <laughs> Congrats to you, Seth, and the great person that you are uh, referencing. That's what's up. Uh, what is that? Phil Tastic, how you doing? Uh, Reg, man, you be careful. You be, be careful. You better put some respect. Put some respect on the Red Goblin. No, do not go to Red Robin. We we went to the Red Robins in Arizona about about a year ago. Uh, a little dated, maybe a little dated. It was awful. 
I don't know if all Red Robins are now trash, uh, but at least the one we went to, it is not what I remember. I used to love Red Robin because I do love a good burger, and that was not the jam. Um, Dave says, Deadly Duo was a great read. He snagged a uh, king size annual lot <clears throat> from our Canadian friends. It includes Fantastic Four issue number six, which he's very excited about. You should be. Congrats on that, brother. Congrats on that one. Uh, scrolling through. <laughs> did, I miss, did I miss your comments, Steve? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to scroll up, brother. I, I'll try to scroll up to see if I see it. And uh, I, I do not. Uh, I, I do not, I do not see it, Seth. I, um, I'm going to have to just say, thank you, uh, Steve. I'm just going to have to say, st uh, thank you very much. All right. Uh, scrolling through, what is this? Um, wa watching Wakanda forever, but I'm here in spirit and grabbed a bunch of red Sonya from the LCS today. Uh, Wakanda forever. Fantastic. Uh, do not believe the rumors. Do not believe the hype. That movie is good. It could have been a little shorter and I would have been fine with that. Uh, Wakanda forever was dope. There, there is no doubt about that in my mind. Do not believe the naysayers. Uh, scrolling through, <clears throat> scrolling through, uh, Cross Bronx, you, sir, will have to wait because we have not gotten to our interview yet. So you, sir, will have to wait up. A <laughs> like her style says, picked up books enough, said, you know what? I respect that. I, I, I respect that, sir. It is all good. Let me see. I'm scrolling through, seeing what else. Red Robin is big. Oh no, these days. <laughs> it, took, I, it took me a minute. My old eyes don't see as well, brother. Uh, but I remember, I remember back in the day, uh, a red robin opened up where I was. And this was a while ago. And I was like, if there was an opportunity to go to the red robin, I was at the red robin. I really was. The burgers, the fries were fantastic. The service was was always just okay. It wasn't great. Uh, but I was there for the burgers. I was there for the burgers and they were amazing. We went again, like I said, and, and I think it was Goodyear, Arizona. I think we went. And uh, it was absolute trash. It was absolute trash. I was disappointed. I drove past one uh, the other day and, and I commented to my wife when we were out this weekend, hey, let's go get some food. And I was like, but I, I don't think we should go to Red Robin. <laughs> we ended up going to a different burger place and it was fantastic. It was a great one. Uh <laughs> Oh, you like the wall? We we decided. I forgot. I forgot you guys haven't seen the wall. We we decided to mix it up back there with some with some cool stuff. So uh, yeah, we 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 decided to uh, to have a good wall back there. I went digging through the uh, the collection and and tried to find some good stuff to put up there. There's a couple of things that I don't think have seen the light of day in quite some time. So it was nice to be able to uh, to put those books on display. And if you guys came in late, uh, we gave away a couple of Gator Guard cases to three people. Uh, so if you missed the beginning of the show, you may want to rewind and check that out because uh, maybe your name was called. I don't know. Uh, I've taken those three names off the screen now, so I'm unable to uh, to go back. Scrolling through, seeing what else you guys are talking about. Wakanda Forever was great. A little sad, but a proper tribute. Man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you, brother. I'm gonna be honest with you. I shed a tear in the first five minutes. I was like, oof, this is going to be brutal. Uh, but there were these inflection points where they re where they they hit that sad note. They went on to some other things, and then they revisited that sad note, and it was almost like uh, grief. Right. It was almost like grief that you go through when you lose somebody. It's not all sadness all at once. It is inflections of sadness. Right. Like I lost my grandmother. It seems like not that long ago. And I still get occasionally sad when I when I have these moments where I'm thinking about her. And as I went through the movie, I felt like we were on this this journey of of grieving with um, the, the main actress. I will also say that in, in this movie, I felt like there were several surprises. There were several things that I did not recall being teased and did not hear about that I was pleasantly surprised about. I was like, oh, that's dope. Didn't see that coming. There were a couple of those really cool moments. And uh, it it was a good movie. Uh, Black, if, if you're just coming in, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I think was a fantastic movie. Uh, a great tribute uh, it was an emotional roller coaster in a lot of respects. I think it could have been a little bit shorter. I don't know why they were going for like the longest movie ever for Marvel. Uh, they, they could have tightened it up and I would have been just fine uh, with that, to be honest. So scrolling through uh, Love Wakanda Forever. Best of phase four for me, slightly edging out Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was not bad either. Shang-Chi was not bad. It wasn't 
it wasn't the emotional roller coaster, but it was good, right? I mean, not every movie can be an emotional roller coaster. Let's be completely honest about that. We don't need that. Um, just like every movie can't be all action, can't be all comedy, right? Like, give me some diversity in, in genre. Somehow missed uh, Batman Deadly Duo. Uh, you need to circle back to your LCS, sir. Circle back to your LCS. Uh, let me see. I'm scrolling through. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's um that's gross i'll be completely honest with you brother that is a little gross uh wakanda forever was strong hope this is an upward path for the mcu iron heart is much cooler in the comics you know i i don't know that i connected with with iron heart to be to be honest with you uh black panther was great uh i don't know that i collect connected with her in an emotional sense, like I, I don't feel invested in her, uh, but maybe we'll get a little bit more of her in her own series. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I will tell you, tell you, uh, no more, no more was, was dope. No more was just, I mean, the, 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 the modifications to his background, I'm good with that. A lot of people didn't like that, man. Tell it, tell me a good story. I'll buy it. I was buying all day with with uh, with how they told his story. I thought it was really good. Uh, if East Tennessee, check out Bit Burger, super good burger place, retro movie and video game theme. That's what's up. Good. good. Thank you for the tip, brother. We are going to uh, Tennessee uh, in March. I think we're going in Tennessee for March. Uh, Black History Month wall. Don't know about the two upper right or uh, the one behind you um upper right i can't tell which is upper right for me from here to be honest with you uh one behind you beloved the cardiac nod is that upper right yeah those two are lobo that is lobo one and lobo two two super hard books to find uh first uh black character i think to have his own series and uh i actually read it uh read issue one and issue two the artwork the story the lettering is all fantastic and i don't like westerns i enjoy lobo uh, i came across a lobo low grade like a 3.0 uh not that long ago and i regret not buying it i really do regret not uh not picking it up so you gotta love some cardiac too any chance i get to, to show off some cardiac man i think he is a dope but underutilized character no no doubt about it um scrolling through um i will tell you i have an unboxing um, I know I'm not an unboxing. I have a submission. I have a submission coming up and I recorded the video. I'm showing it later this week. And it and 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 it has ties to some of the things that we are talking about right now. So I definitely encourage you guys. Man, I definitely encourage you guys to stay tuned. When I'm watching Angela Bassett at the UN, all I kept seeing was my mother. That's all that I kept seeing was my mother. I was looking at her, her uh, shoulders and clavicle and her arms. And it just reminded me of my mother. Angela Bassett absolutely crushed it. She crushed it. She crushed it. She crushed it. Uh, yeah. And I, I enjoyed it. Uh, Steve on the board saying Riri was cool. Uh, Riri's back there on the wall. She's up there. Um, slow scrolling through. Um, what is this? Uh, Scarecrow. Haven't uh, seen Wakanda forever. Not a fan of Submariner, but really like Shuri from the first film. Man, um, I'm I'm a big, I like Namor. I I, I dig Namor. And at some point, I'm going to get some of that earlier, uh, early Submariner, uh, Human Torch, uh, Alex Schomburg stuff, because I dig, I dig the Human Torch and I dig the whole water and fire thing. And I've been, I've been a Namor fan for a very, very long time. So sign me up, but I, I definitely get, uh, not necessarily being a fan, but, um, that's Namor. We are talking about Namor two, two completely, two completely different characters. Uh, give me a sec here. Let me send a quick message. Uh, Give me a sec. Bear with me, folks. Trying to find the right mechanism to uh, make the magic happen here. Uh, bear with me. Bear with me. So one thing that I will tell you all, uh, one thing I will tell you all is that I have a little bit of an of, of an announcement. Um, we we have a, an artist that worked on uh, issue three of isolation that decided that he was going to be very generous. He decided that he was going to be very generous and donate 
to to us to Swolger Publishing some original art from issue three as part of our Kickstarter campaign. That artwork right now is available on ReggieCollects.com. And what he has given us is basically four pages, two single pages and a double spread. And all of that is available as packages G, H, and I right now on ReggieCollects.com. Chase Cohen is the is the guy is the artist and i want to show you one of the pages that original art pages that is available right now as part of our kickstarter air quote kickstarter because it's not official it's it's a kickstarter versus hey i need some money so i can print this book um but this is the double page this is the double page that chase has uh graciously donated to us to be able to uh, to raise funds. And I can tell you that uh, the, the light in here is so bright that it makes it hard to see exactly what this is. But this is a double spread that is beautifully illustrated by a really talented artist from the Kubert School. The, and he's give, given us this again for us to be able to raise some cash, to be able to uh, con continue our efforts with isolation. And so you have an opportunity to pick up uh, basically, you know, Depends on how you look at it. Four pages of original art available on the website right now. So if you guys are interested in supporting issue three of Isolation, uh, there are several packages that are available right now on the website. There's there's everything from a single issue to double issues to digital to uh, ash cans to original art from the actual comic and what you'll notice when you go there you will see uh, pages four or five which is what i just showed you there page 17 and page 20. one thing to note about page 17 is i'm only showing you a single panel from page 17 because there are some things that happen on page 17 that give away too much of the story and so we had to we show uh, the others, we show three, four, and we show 20 full in their entirety, but we show a single panel of, of, of page 17 just because of what is actually being depicted. Again, if you guys are interested in supporting ReggieCollects.com, uh, we, we appreciate it. And I will tell you, we have raised some decent money. We have raised some decent money uh, towards issue three. Uh, Mr. Tomlinson. It is good to see you, brother. I have not seen you in a month of Sundays. I spoke to somebody about you recently. Uh, maybe it was Amir. Maybe it was Amir. And uh, I was like, yeah, I haven't seen this dude in a while. And then then you appear. It's good to see you, brother. Welcome to uh, welcome back to the live stream. Scrolling down through some of the comments. Uh, what is that? Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh we, you know, he we we um we we tend to buy Doug and I tend to buy some of the art from um from the artist to support their efforts, right? So we we tend to buy some of the original art and then after the issue comes out, uh people have the ability to buy some of the art as well. And and Chase's whole thing was, hey, I want to see this continue. I want to contribute. Here is, you know, basically three, three packages that you can make available to subscribers. So I was very appreciative of that because he wants us to succeed. He wants us to succeed. So um scrolling through, uh, yeah, yeah. Issue three is imminent. Im issue three is going down so we have already finished all the artwork all the lettering all the proofreading it is currently in layout right now we are laying it out it's called pre-press we're trying to make sure that everything flows the right way all the pagination is in the right place all the ads are in the right place and then we've got to go through a couple of rounds of, of of reviewing it to make sure all the bleeds are where they're supposed to go and then we release it to the printer so isolation issue three is going down there is no doubt about that uh, print run will be much smaller. We are only doing two covers to keep costs sensible. And the hope is that people will actually continue to support issue three so that we can get to issue four, right? Because none of this stuff is free. Uh, so I definitely want, uh, I, I definitely want, there he is. There's Amir. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Um, yeah. So we're trying to keep it moving, trying to keep it moving. So, all right. So let me go ahead and I want to get to a, Oh, I think I have the artwork here. I do have the artwork. Let me show you guys this real quick. I'll show it on screen so you guys can actually take a look at it. Here is uh, pages four and five. So this is what I just showed you here a moment ago. You can see uh, it is it is massive. It is two pages that have essentially been uh, connected, right? So a, a nice little spread inside the book, a lot of pencil, 
uh, line work, a lot of inking work actually went into the creation of that. So that is basically four and five. I think I said three and four. So my apologies for that. Four and five. Uh, and then here is, let me see if I can find 17. This is 17. This is the one where I'm showing you a single, a single panel uh, from, from 17. So um, there is a lot of, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of activity that's happening on this one. Uh, and we don't want to give it all the way before people actually get the comic in their hands. So that's why we, we reduced it to a single. And then here is, um, here is page 20. So you can see, uh, the main, the main character right there, front and center and the, and the little blow out there on the left-hand side. Uh, but again, shout out to, uh, to Chase for making magic happen and doing this artwork incredibly fast, uh, to a, to a high degree that the quality on this thing is impressive. And then also for being a class act to donate some pages to us for us to be able to, uh, to share with folks to keep the ball rolling. So there you go. I wanted to make sure that I uh, showed that stuff. So um, let me, let me get to a news event. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this because it is something that I spoke about in a reel. I spoke about this in a reel earlier. Uh, I want to say it was this week. I think it was this week about AMC. AMC has decided that they are going to basically charge people based upon the seat that they want to sit in. And so if you have a desire to have one of those really good seats where you can actually see really well, to see the movie really well, you are going to have to pay a premium price. Movie theaters are constantly finding ways to uh, try to bring audiences back to the experience, to back to experience films on the big screen, while it also attempting to find ways to maximize revenue, with AMC theaters launching a new initiative in hopes of accomplishing both objectives. I will tell you, I think that this is not going to succeed. I think that they are not going to bring people back. Uh, so objective one, I think is a fail objective two, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll make a little more money, uh, on average, but not in totality, uh, to bring in more viewers, uh, less desired seats, such as those in the front row will be discounted while the optimal seats with the best view of the screen will be more expensive. Some of the most popular seating options, however, will reportedly maintain their same cost. And Variety is the one that I guess started reporting on this. They're basically saying that theaters in New York, Chicago, and Kansas City are set to roll out nationwide by the end of the year. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, set to roll out Friday and across the nation uh, by the end of the year. So it is an, it is an interesting approach. And basically what they say is that we are a similar form of entertainment. We are a similar form of entertainment to a concert or sporting event. And in those venues, you pay based upon your seat and the proximity of your seat to the action. And so they feel like that is their market, that that is what they are competing with. And thus they are pricing themselves that way. I, I think, I think that uh, their actual competition is Netflix. Their actual competition is my sofa at my house watching my TV. That is their actual competition, not necessarily a sporting event. I think that they need to maybe think about their market a little bit differently because this misses the mark. This misses the mark in my mind. And maybe it does uh, you all as well. Better viewing experience at home. He says, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Um, even in the UK, even in the UK, they're like, nope, the best viewing experience is from the sofa that I already own on the Netflix that I have already that I am already uh, uh, paying for. Yeah, I, it's brutal. But let me show you guys. I, I went and did a little bit of additional research because I, I feel like this might help us to understand why. Uh, they are sucking wind. Why they are sucking wind. Th this chart, this chart that I found on the numbers.com kind of sort of tells you a really interesting picture. If you look at this chart, what we are seeing is annual ticket sales. So we're looking at in the with the blue line here, tickets sold, and then the box office that comes in as a result. And you can see up here, what was this? 2018, we were looking at basically $12 billion. $12 billion box office is what the total was. And they were basically selling 
uh, I guess that's 1.3 million. No, what is that billion? I can't tell. Uh, somebody help me out. Uh, but they were selling, yeah, billions. They were selling 1.3 billion tickets, generating basically $12 billion. COVID hit. COVID hit. Those numbers dropped. Those numbers dropped dramatically. As you would imagine, world came to a stop. Uh, everything was bad. But then how have things recovered? We're, we are uh, a couple of years out and we are not even close. We are not even close. Box office is basically 7.4 billion, 7.4 billion versus 12 billion. Uh, they are sucking wind. They are trying to survive. And if you imagine that is total box office, all movie theaters, not necessarily AMC slice of the pie. So AMC, AMC may be sucking wind more or less. I don't know versus their, their counterparts, but you have to imagine, think about the footprint. Think about the footprint that they have, the real estate that they occupy with movie theaters. And if you've been to the theaters lately, you probably know that that footprint is big and empty. It is cavernous, just how, just how empty it happens to be. Uh, and so AMC is trying to make some magic happen with these moves. And, and I, I just, I just do not know if it's going to work to their advantage. Uh, we're, we're watching a screen, not live people performing. You, that is well said, brother. You are not watching a performance. You are not watching a performance that is essentially a, a moment in time. Right, because that's what a sporting event is, or a concert, or a, a comedic uh, performance. It is a moment in time that you are witnessing, that you are sharing with everybody else that's there. Right, um, with with movies, not necessarily like you you are experiencing a uh, some time and you're experiencing a an ex something with people that you probably don't even like. <laughs> And they're probably irritating you, you know? So uh, what is that? Uh, streaming, booming, theaters, business, sank. Hard to undo that. Uh, blockbuster. Blockbuster versus Netflix. Uh, it, it could be bad. It, 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 it could be bad. Uh, looks like, well said, Scarecrow. Looks like the opposite graph of a comic boom. I mean, again, I think, you know, there was a lot of people. I think that the market, comic book market exploded during the pandemic in terms of the number of people that were were, were reading comics, were digging comics out of their collection, that were engaging with comic book content. Uh, and now we are not necessarily in that place, to be honest with you. I mean, I remember live streams where we had 200 people. We had 200 people watching a live stream. We've seen LCSs go out of business. We've seen uh, uh, retailers go out of business, dealers go out of business, right? So we are, we are not in the boom period anymore. Not saying crash. I don't think that that's what this is. This is a market correction. And, uh, yeah, it's brutal. It's brutal out there scrolling through, um, wonder how much the close-up seats are going to cost. Close-up seats will be cheaper at AMC. That's what they were saying is that the seats that are close to the screen, because it's like you got to crank your neck to be able to see it, will be inexpensive. And I think potentially uh, the like the the accessible seats, the seats for people that have disabilities, I think that those will also remain affordable. It is those choice seats. You know, when you get to the theater, right, like 35 minutes early, I never do. But when you get there like 35 minutes early, I imagine that people aim for those middle seats in that upper deck, right? Those are the seats that where they're going to jack the price up. And I heard from someone in Canada that AMC actually did this very same thing in Canada uh, right before they closed all of their theaters in Canada. Now, that is unconfirmed. That is that is one report, anecdotal evidence that I received from somebody. Maybe maybe the Canadians that are here in the room can correct me on that. But that was the rumor that I heard on the street. So I definitely want to caveat that scrolling through. I go to AMC all the time, uh, mostly IMAX to watch the Marvel and DC movies. IMAX costs more anyway. Did they mention IMAX? I did not see any call out for any brand under AMC, right? Because I'm guessing AMC is the, the parent company. There's a smaller brands underneath. I didn't see any mention for, for IMAX. Uh, but maybe, maybe we'll get IMAX's prices and then the IMAX will go up. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, scrolling through, I'm afraid the theater's days are numbered. I love going to the movie, says Trev. I miss how classless the theater used to be. <laughs> oh, no, brother. It is now the haves and have nots. If you want butter on your popcorn, you, sir, are going to have to pay. And as I said to someone else, 
uh, you can use the bathroom. The bathroom is free, but the soap and the towels will cost you. Just saying. Uh, if AMC was smarter, they'd be licensing with the NFL and Uber. Uh, fill those places up on Sunday afternoons with drunks and get the most likely frog brother. I'll be honest. I didn't know where you were going. I, I did not know where you were going with that, but it was a fun journey. It was a fun journey to be on with you, brother. Uh, I still love going to the movie theater, but there hasn't been good movies that get me in the seat. Uh, I, I, I didn't see uh, Black, Con Black Panther Wakanda Forever in the theaters. I saw it at home. I absolutely loved it. I think a lot of people went to the theaters and saw it based upon how that movie is performing. So it may not have resonated with everybody, but I think I think they're, you know, you have to decide. I haven't seen anything. I saw Puss in Boots. That was the last movie I saw. And I took at least three quick naps during Puss in Boots. That movie was probably 45 minutes too long. I'm going to just be completely honest with you. All my parents out there, if you saw it, I am sorry for you. We will never get that time back. Scrolling down through the comments, seeing what else you guys are talking about. Uh, I think everybody's welcoming everybody. I'm so behind. Uh, there you go. So going during the empty hours of the week, pay for cheaper seats, sit anywhere you want. That's my question, Liger. Will there be ushers in there to uh, usher you to your proper seat to prevent people from doing what you just described? Also, what happens if I show up late? If I get one of those premium seats, is there going to be an usher that will get somebody out of my seat if I choose to pay that premium price? These are the things that people really want to know because I don't want to show up early for a movie, but I do like a good seat. I will tell you that. Um, those were premium seats that cost more for sure. Cineplex theaters, he says, scrolling through. <laughs> Great way to make more people stay at home. Uh, you could absolutely be right about that. So for those folks that came in a little bit late, I showed you all the new packages that we are offering for our Kickstarter for isolation issue number three. The issue is essentially done. We are raising funds to try to recover some of the money already spent uh, for the artwork, the lettering, the proofreading, but also to print the comic as well. Uh, the, the fundraising efforts have gone pretty well, but thankfully the artist on issue three, Chase, has donated several pages of original art to us that we are now putting available on ReggieCollects.com. If you go to the, ISO, uh, the Isolation Issue 3 Kickstarter page on the in the shop, you will see packages G, H, and I. I think they are all affordably priced. If you want to support the Kickstarter, ReggieCollects.com, all of it is there for you. There is some dopeness. Scrolling through some of the comments here. <laughs> I've been to the move, I've been to the show twice since COVID. Is just not the same for sure. Brother, I will tell you, in Michigan, we call it the show. And, and uh, people really don't know what I'm talking about when I say the show. The show means movies. And uh, a lot of people don't pick up on that. A lot of people don't pick up on that, Kevin. But I appreciate it. I don't know where you're from, but I appreciate you, Kevin. That's all that I'm saying. I love a good show. I love a good show. <laughs> Scrolling down through the comments here, the whole uh, AMC thing is dumb. Uh, where I live, it's Regal Theaters. There you go. Uh, there you go. It, <laughs> so it it is it is potentially not a good move for them, but I'm guessing that they are grasping at straws, right? They're grasping at straws, trying to survive, and uh, sometimes in desperation, people make not good decisions. Uh, they sometimes make not good decisions. So uh, I call it on the pictures again. I, is this blockbuster? Are we seeing blockbuster? So. At the, if you saw the thing, you saw the thumbnail, uh, there is a comic. There is a comic that has been optioned for a TV show after just a couple of issues, just a couple of issues. Unfortunately, it is not isolation, but you never know. You never know how the ball is going to bounce. But I wanted to invite the gentleman that is behind this comic on the show to talk a little bit about it. Uh, we are going to talk to the man known as Mikey Sutton. And for those that don't know Mikey, he is a recognized movie scooper, which is why we were talking about the AMC, right? Because he scoops movies. He is a journalist. He is the editor-in-chief and the owner of geekositymag.com, a website that I reference a lot for news. Uh, Mikey, as I mentioned, is also the writer behind the comic known as Dreamwalker that was published by Second Skin Comics. 
that has now been optioned for a TV show. And I want to welcome to the show right now, Mikey, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Reggie, and what a thrill it is to be on your show tonight for the first time. As you know, I'm a big fan of yours for, Brother, for years it, now. <laughs> it did not hit me until the other day that I had never had you on the show. Yeah, that's my we, debut. <laughs> we've been on a show together, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah. I never had you on my, and it, it did not dawn on me until the <laughs> other day. What a great time to be on, right? And little history is what I share between you and I. One night I was working, randomly watching you live on a Sunday evening when your show was on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I heard my name. Did I just hear my name? And you and I had never interacted before. And I'm like, Reggie Clicks just mentioned me, you know? And they're like, does he know I'm watching? Because he didn't even know. I was not a subscriber yet at the time. So that's how it all started between Reggie and I. There you go, man. And again, I, I get a, a lot of news. I reference a lot of yeah. news and it's like, I look to see what's out there, who's talking about what, and I use it, right? And Geekosity yeah. Mag was, Thank um, you. I, I don't remember what it was, but I referenced something that you were talking about or in the news for. So, yeah. uh, and we've had a lot of contact over the last mm -hmm. couple of years as a result of, 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 I guess, me initially mentioning you. But <laughs> um, Mikey, there, there may be some people out there that are not familiar sure. with uh, Dreamwalker. Can yeah. you can you give them the elevator pitch? Exactly, exactly. So Dreamwalker is about a young Filipina um, in the Philippines who was in a horrible bus crash and where she is the only survivor. And she discovers that she has the ability to walk through people's dreams and she can steal objects from them and use them against monsters, which are from Filipino folklore. Um, she's a supernatural vlogger, so these powers come in handy with, with the kind of research that she does. But she has an Achilles heel, and I got that from Spider-Man, Reggie. You're a big Spider-Man fan. I love Spider-Man tonight. Um, actually, guys, I have a treat for you. Reggie doesn't know this. I'm going to drop a, a Spider-Man bomb tonight on his show, exclusive. Um, a big MCU bomb is going to drop tonight on the show. Um, anyway, um, I got it from Spider-Man, where Spider-Man, when he runs out of web fluid, right, what does he do? He has to use his intelligence and his strength to get out of the situation. When she takes a weapon from somebody's dream, if the dreamer wakes up, that weapon disappears. Mm. So what does she do? And so that that's her Achilles heel, and that's all from Spider-Man. Um, so she decides to use his power to fight all these monsters that are all of a sudden coming out. And they're all from my childhood, stuff that I learned through folklore. And, you know, the elderly would tell me, hey, there's this vampire bird or whatever, you know, things like that. And, and I incorporated them in the comic books. So in a nutshell, that's what Dreamwalker is about. There you go. And and again, I didn't know some of that. I mean, I've read issue one and I've read issue two, but I think it's always helpful to kind of hear yeah. uh, some of the backstory. But issue one and issue two both came out in, in 2022. And and you tell me, I think it did really well in, yeah. in the Philippines and also mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. Um, talk a little bit about that, but then also, when can we expect issue three to come out? Because we've had one and two. When is three yeah. dropping? Yeah, three is dropping in April. Um, actually finishing the script right now. It got it got delayed for quite a while because, ironically, because of the show, uh, because we were working on negotiations and everything. You're gonna go inside Hollywood tonight. I'm gonna tell you guys a lot of stuff about Hollywood tonight. Um, that's coming out in April, so the script's almost done. And by the way, you and Doug are in it again. I kind of where, where's Waldo? A little, little funny cameo with you and Doug. I got a running gag now. I have I have plans for you and Doug in the comic book. So okay, okay, <laughs> that was a pleasant surprise. Like I didn't expect to see myself <laughs> or Doug in the issue, and it was it was cool to open it up and actually see us in there. But um, can you talk a little bit about like the the Philippines, right? Like you're yeah. you're half Filipino. Yeah, the book did really well in the Philippines. Can yeah. you give us a little bit of texture for that? Because sure. in the U.S. we don't necessarily appreciate that, right? So can you talk about mm -hmm. that? Well, a lot of the Philippine connections because of Kate Valdez, who I modeled the character after. Um, and it goes, there's a very strange story, uh, Reggie, about how this all has turned out. So, so 2018, I was, I suffered a stroke, life threatening stroke. I was an hour away from dying, actually. Um, make a long story short, make, make a long story short, I was told that I may never write again, ever, because I lost the ability to use both my hands. 
and I couldn't walk, and I might not walk again either. So, Dreamwalker has a deeper meaning mm -hmm. than what you think because all I could do back then, Reggie, was dream that I'm walking because I couldn't walk. Yep. So, after two and a half months of rehabilitation, I regained the ability to walk and use my hands again. It was a miracle at the time. Um, so, when I was back home, I was out of the hospital. I was walking again back and forth to the living room. My mom was watching a soap opera called Onanai, and I don't watch soap operas, especially Filipino ones. I don't watch them, right? But I saw this girl on there, which was keyboard this, and it stopped me in my tracks, like, who is this, right? And so I'm watching the show, and it's a beautiful girl, but she could also really act. So it was really, really surprising. Um, so I posted her picture on Facebook that later that evening. Well, that's her, yeah, holding a Dream Walker comic book. Um, and, you know, I posted a, a picture on Facebook and I guess I, I quoted a song and the person who commented was Noel Leon Flores, who became the artist for Dreamwalker. Mm. And like, I have all three of them on the same post from 2018. And I decided to model the character after her because... Originally, Dreamwalker was supposed to be a comedy. I know if you, if you read the first two issues, it's hard to imagine now. Yeah. But it was a comedy, and it, it wasn't funny at all. It sucked. <laughs> so, um, and I was like, I, I couldn't make it work, man. You know, sometimes you're right, right? You just, just, you just it, like, forget about it. It just won't work. It, it right? doesn't work. So you it have to go work. in a different direction. It exactly. sounds like that's what you did. And yeah, because I was talking to her. You know, we were, we were talking over the phone. And she asked me, hey, have you seen Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix? I said, no, I haven't seen it. He goes, you should watch it. You like it. Mm -hmm. I watched it, and I'm like, why am I doing comedy? I, it's got to be horror. That's my natural element, you know? Yep. So I made it horror, and the script that I had been writing for a year, I wrote it in a week. Mm. And I, and, I, and Noel was my artist. He wanted to work with me so bad. And so I sent him the script, and I said, model it after Kate Valdez who he worked with on the oh. show. So I had no idea this guy was a big deal. Like, he's a very humble man. Um, he is the lead visual designer of her fantasy show that she worked on. So they knew each other to have pictures together right on the set. I'm like, so he modeled it after her. And then that's how everything um, on, on, on that transpired. But can you hold on just for a second? I'll be right back. Yeah, so sure. So for those folks that are coming in a little late, we are we are talking to Mikey Sutton. Mikey Sutton is a is a journalist. He is a movie scooper. Uh, he has also written a comic called Dreamwalker, and his comic came out just before Isolation did. Right, his issue one came out. He has issue two out, and issue three is expected in April. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for that. But we are sitting down talking with him because he has two issues out. He has a third coming out, as I mentioned. And uh, his comic has already been optioned for a TV show. And so I wanted to have him on to talk a little bit about uh, how that transpired, how that came about. And we just heard from him that he modeled the main uh, person in this comic after an actress that he happened to see on uh, the, the TV show in the Philippines, uh, got to know her. He ended up connecting with an artist. The book is out. So, so Mikey, to that yeah. point, brother, how the heck does someone <laughs> go from having two issues of a comic to now having <laughs> that comic option for a TV show? How does that happen? Yeah, it's very surreal what happened. And, you know, I, I told my story to an insider who saw the article on Variety, um, last week, actually a week ago today, and he goes, "How did this happen? Like, how you you? There's only two issues of Dreamwalker that came out. Only two. That was it. Like, like this never happens, guy. Like, how did this happen? You're in variety now all of a sudden. And I said, and after I told him the story, which I'm about to tell you, Reggie, he said, you know, your backstory is more unbelievable than your comic book. Like, I I, I can believe a girl can walk through dreams, but I can't believe your story, but they played out in real, in real time on Facebook. You know, yeah. Facebook was the key to all this, Reggie. All of this was Facebook. Like, I posted her picture on Facebook, and well found me. He got me in contact with Kate. I interviewed her, which led to her telling me about Sabrina, which made me change it to horror, which is how I finished the book. And so... um. I was telling um, 
telling him like the story I said, look, it all begins with Spider-Man. And I know you're a big Spider-Man fan, Reggie. It was perfect for you to tell you the story. Yeah. Um, because the first comic book I ever read was Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, I read it in Origins of Marvel Comics. The trade period back had a reprint of AF15 in there. And um, so Spider-Man was a big influence, but here's the key. Here's the weirdest part of the story, right? No one knew who I was in 2019 when I was writing Green Rocker. And that's one of the things I was worried about. I'm putting this book out. Who's going to buy this? No one knows who I am, right? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, August uh, 22nd, I believe it was, um, I kind of became famous because Tom Holland was going to leave the MCU. There's that whole story that came out. Well, the night before that happened, Reggie, I got a call from an insider for, for, from Sony. He said, hey, Sony and Disney had a, ker- a kerfuffle, kerfuffle, and it looks like Tom Holland is leaving the MCU. And he goes, hey, I heard Deadline is going to run the story in the morning. Do you want to run it? I said, no, no, man. I don't. I was not a public scooper, Reggie. I was mostly hidden. I had suited names that I was using when I was scooping. Once in a while, I did scoop publicly. The one that he knew me from was Spider-Man, the Spider-Man deal to begin with. I, I scooped Spider-Man Civil War. So he goes, hey, I want to give you this. Like, that's terrible news, right? I'm like... I don't want to I don't want to run with the bad news. Give me the good bad news. news right? It's terrible, you know? <laughs> and I, said, I said, look, you know, I'll... I'll no offense, but I'm gonna ask somebody from Disney if this what, what's going on here, right? Yeah. And so in the middle of the night, Reggie, I was texting people. Some were getting mad. I go to sleep, Mikey. You know what I mean? Um, because one guy told me, he goes, "Hey, give me a call tomorrow at noon, and I'll tell you what's really going on." Okay, okay. And then I realized, I look at the date, Reggie. I realize the time zone difference, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that day in Manila was Kate Walter's birthday. And she loves Spider-Man. She loves Tom Holland. I'm like, what what horrible news to wake up to? And I was like, oh, man. I mean, I don't want her to wake up with this news right to her birthday. So the next day, I called the guy. And he said, no, it's just leverage. You know, Sony is just trying to get a better deal. Mm. Um, They're trying to get public sympathy. Mm. They're trying to say, oh, it's Marvel's fault, not our our fault. And so Marvel would cave in and give them a better deal. So I went on Facebook. I had about a thousand friends, Reggie. It was no, I was nothing. I was nobody back then, you know. So I put it out there, and I decided to make it public because it was her birthday. And I wanted her to read that first before I spread the bad news, right? So I did that for her. I was like, okay, this way she didn't have bad news on that day. Did not realize the impact it would have. Um, I checked my Facebook an hour later. It had like a thousand shares. I'm like, well, what's going on? That's you know. Crazy. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and then um, hour by hour, I kept picking the. You know, she saw the news. Like, okay, I feel better. She saw the news. Right? All I was thinking, I wasn't thinking about becoming famous or anything. Um, then somebody, I don't know where, found my track record, my secret track record, that stuff I had been posting on Facebook, mm-hmm. like the Spider Man deal, Black Panther, and Civil War. And like, man, this guy's been right all along. Mm-hmm. Okay, when that happened, like the big bang that my facebook post was everywhere right mm. all of a sudden yahoo.com put me on their front page like it was insane i'm like what's going on here but guess who saw it the person who saw it was the president of the studio who optioned the comic book mm. all of a sudden he's following me the big mcu fan and, and i'm thinking I, I knew nothing about this at the time reggie yeah, yeah. um it was when I had Noel draw the first illustration of Kate Valdez, a Dreamwalker. So I'm planning a comic book. Here's the first you know, panel from it, whatever. He messaged it. He sent me a message. And I have no idea who this guy was. Like, no clue. And he goes, hey, um, big fan of yours. When your comic book comes up, can you send me a digital file? I want to read it, right? And at the time, Reggie, I didn't look up people when they messaged me. Like, I didn't know what, who they were or anything. Yeah. Had no idea this guy was a president of a studio. Okay. So mm. it gets weirder, Reggie. Trust me, it gets really weird. Okay. So, in order to inspire me to write Dreamwalker issue one, I saw a Filipino horror film called Eerie on Netflix. And that 
giving the tone that I wanted for the book because, mm. you know, I'm kind of learning on the job. Dreamwalker is my first comic book, guys. So, you yeah. know. My- oh, looks like we may have lost him here. We'll we'll bear with him and uh, see whether his, his sound recovers. But it's uh, my, we're, we're, we're having a conversation with Mikey Sutton, who yeah, is a that. <laughs> journalist and movie scooper. He has given us a download on how it is that his two issue comic has now been picked up yeah. and being optioned for a TV show. Uh, it seems like it all comes down to, to Facebook. Facebook <laughs> is, the, is the secret. I don't use Facebook anymore, but I'm telling you after this show wraps up, I'm going to uh, reignite my Facebook you page should, because you really should, Reggie. You should, it, it might lead to me getting option. Mikey, continue with your story, brother. So, yeah. So, um, I was watching a film called Eerie, which gave me the inspiration on how to write the book, right? The tone. And Eerie takes place in the Philippines. It's a Filipino horror film. Mm. And it's on Netflix. You guys want to watch it? And you, you, you <laughs> I got more else to talk about with that, too. Um, so I'm watching this film. I got the tone for the book. I said, okay, I'm, this book is going to rock, right? And I know how the tone is now. Um, so I, I was talking to this, uh, this, this, this president of the studio. And he said, can you send me digital files? Okay, so now I know who he was. My heart's beating really fast. Why does he want to see my book, right? Um, and, you know, I don't want to expect things, you know, because when you expect yeah. things, you get disappointed, right? Just, yep. I just let things roll. Whatever happens, happens, right? But my gut feeling tells me this guy wants to option my kind book, right? But it's not even it's not even written. I mean, it's not even drawn yet, I'm trying to say, right? It's not even drawn yet. <laughs> you um, mean it's not, it's not even real? Mikey, that's real. what you mean. Yeah, it's script, not even real. A script. It's a script. The script and, and, and one one page. One page. Of, yeah. of art. That's it. That's all that's all there was, right? And this guy's already interested, you know. It seems like it, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it took a year to finish for Noella to draw the book. Because at the time my humble little artist was working on a multi multi million dollar TV show yep. called Voltus Five, which is a live action version of an anime in the Philippines. Um, so I was working on that while I was drawing Dreamwalker. And, he, and I, I, I didn't have money to pay him either. He's doing it for free at this point. Mm. Um, so the book comes out a year ago, um, actually. It was on Valentine's Day when it came out. And it actually sold out on February 1st on the pre-orders. It sold out. Um, so he sent me the message. He goes, oh, your book is out. Can you, can, I just want to remind you to send me digital files. I said, okay, sure. It's, it's cool. So I got his email. I sent him digital files. And that kind of like, I was so focused on the book being out and promoting it, I wasn't even thinking about it, right? Yep. So I get an email from him about a month, not about a week or two later, Reggie, because I read the book. I really, really like it. Mm. Can you talk to my producer? I'm like, okay, now this is getting serious, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, what world am I on, you know? Um, so I set up a Zoom conference with his producer. Um because that time zone difference was like in the middle of the night over here, right? Because she's in the Philippines and he's in Singapore. Mm. Um, so we talk oh, you know, on, on Zoom and she goes, well, you know, everybody here really likes your comic book. And I want to tell you why I wanted a conference with you. Okay, okay. We want to option your book. I'm mm. like, huh? <laughs> it's like, mm. yeah, yeah, it goes, we're going to send you a contract. Um, like, what you know, like it's gotten to that stage where, like, our first conversation already That's talking crazy. contract, Isn't that crazy, crazy, right? You know, and so the, uh, she goes, Okay, here's where it gets really weird, Reggie. She goes, Let me introduce myself, by the way, in case you're wondering what my work is. I'm a, I'm a film producer, okay? I produced a film called Eerie. <laughs> I'm like, No way. <laughs> No way could this be happening. Uh, it all comes full circle. <laughs> full circle. And I was, I said, that film inspired Dreamwalker 1. In fact, issue 2 is a tribute to Eerie. So I was already That's crazy. Plotting issue 2. She goes, oh, of course. Like, of course I produced Eerie. Our studio released the film. Like, wait, wait a minute. you, The studio that wants to option my book. That's crazy. Released the movie that inspired it. That's crazy. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. So, so Facebook... And some chance, right? And I mean, (laughs) of course, doing the work, right? I mean, you had to actually do the work, but that that's an amazing story, Mikey. No doubt about it. Um, in my in in your mind, did I'm I know the answer to this, but I have to ask it. Um, you you never really imagined this happening, right? I mean, you were 
you were puttling around with it. You and yeah. to go from where you were to where you are now, it, it, did you imagine that? And and have they started filming just yet? Or are you still in the pre-production phase? Yeah. Um, in terms of imagining it, I told Noel before he drew it. Mm-hmm. I told him, I want you to light it up like Netflix. Mm. Make it look like a Netflix show. That's how I was picturing it in my mind. Yep. I was a big fan of the Daredevil show on Netflix. I wanted that to have a moody lightning, moody lighting and everything. Mm-hmm. So the book looks like a show already. <laughs> it looks like a show. Um, well, it's one of the things the producer brought up. He goes, your comic book is already a TV series, the way we, the visuals are presented and everything. Um, but no, I never, I never imagined it. I mean, I just wanted to get the book out. That was really... Yeah. My focus. I'm a single focus person, you know. Yeah. Like my goal is to get the book out and make it as good as it, good as it can, right? Yep. Um, and so right now we're in we're going into pre production right now, Reggie. Um, and originally, I, my role was story consultant at first, but I got promoted to executive producer. I am executive producer of my first TV show, which is amazing. <laughs> And a lot more work than I thought, but it's great. I love it. Executive um, producing your first TV show on yeah. your first comic, first that time you've ever book, which only had two issues published. How does that happen, Mikey? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't understand it, brother. Uh, we, we are getting close on time, Mikey. Yeah, I know that you it. may mention that you had a potential MCU Spider-Man related yeah. bomb that you want to drop that I honestly don't know anything about, but I made a note of it so I can circle <laughs> back to it. Uh, do you want to go ahead and share that news with us now? Um, before I do just one more weird tidbit please, about this. Please. When they they chose the director, they chose the director of Eerie. So the director of that film was directing this movie, this show. Um, and one more thing I want to bring up. During the contract, Reggie, um, they asked me, I kid you not, they asked me, what do you like 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 a like a McDonald's happy meal, like, like a restaurant, you're asking for a menu, right? Yeah. Do you want a TV show? Do you want a movie? Or do you want an animated series? Like, like what? Um, I said TV show because I want to prove myself first. Mm. Um, secondly, I want more of the story to be told. So I just want to get that across. Why is the TV show? Is that, I chose a TV show. There you go. Um, but as far as the MCU bomb is concerned, exclusive Reggie Collects, I have not dropped this anywhere. Uh, I am hearing from my sources that Null is a variant of Kang and will be in Avengers Secret Wars um, fighting the Spider-Verse characters such as Tom Holland's Venom and Andrew Garfield, Andrew Garfield and Tony McGuire. Okay. So what I... So, <laughs> so Null, the symbiote yeah. guy, yeah. Yeah. is a variant of, of Kang, Kang the Conqueror. Yeah. yeah. And will be appearing in which movie now? Aven- yeah, Avengers Secret Wars. Avengers Secret Wars, when that yeah. comes out, fighting yeah. Spider-Man. Is yeah. that what I just heard? Well, well you're fighting three Spider-Mans, actually. Okay. <laughs> My, Mikey, uh, you've been right a lot. But yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, brother. <laughs> I have said to so many people, we will yeah. not see Noel the symbiote god. We will yeah. not see Noel. We won't see him. He's too yeah. new of a character. Mikey, please don't prove me wrong. I mean, I want you to <laughs> prove me wrong, but I don't want to be wrong. I mean, it's, it's weird. I, I'm a mix of emotions right now, you know? <laughs> well, you know, by the time it comes out, I mean, um, they're, they are speeding up the process now when characters are appearing. Yeah. Because, I mean, they, they said, uh, Kevin yeah. Feige said, what, 10 years, a 10-year yeah. lag. Yeah. And and I've I've anchored to that notion. And, yeah. like, when people ask me my opinion of stuff, I reference back to what's been said mm-hmm. publicly. I mean, maybe by the time Secret Wars comes out, uh, 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 Avengers comes out, maybe it will be 10 years. I, I think don't know. it's 2026, to... right? Is it 2026? I don't know. I, off the top of my yeah. head, I don't know. Yeah. Noel is a dope character, though. Don't oh, get yeah, me wrong. Definitely. Right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I just don't want to be wrong. So it has to be right at the 10 year mark. So I can still say that I was right, you know, but Mikey brother, yeah. I, um, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you, you so know, much. Reggie. You and I have back and forth all the time, yeah. periodically for, for years now. Yeah. It, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show to hear you. how you went from a comic 
to an option TV show in which you are the executive producer. You threw in some bonus MCU uh, news <laughs> that hasn't been released anywhere. So I thank you for that. Yeah. Um, where can people get a hold of you, Michael, Mikey, mm. on, on social media so that they can check out sure. everything that you offer? I'm Sutton Pub on Instagram, uh, Mikey Sutton on Facebook. Um, also, various YouTube channels with Sil Abdul. I, I host co host Rose Gallery. I just want to say hello to the Cool Table and Sil Nation out there. Uh, but Instagram, that's probably the easiest way to contact me. It's easy to find. Just look up Sutton Pub on Instagram, you'll find it. There we go. Mikey, brother, thank you for coming thank on. Thank you so it's much, been an Absolute pleasure, man. And All great right. luck with that. Great luck with isolation. You and Doug you do a fantastic job on that comic book. So it's it's Doug. I just I just <laughs> along for the ride. It's Doug <laughs> and, the, and the great team that we have. But thank you, brother. I appreciate you, those buddy. kind Take words. Care. Take thank care. You. you too. All right. So that was Mikey Sutton. Uh, I, again, I have, I've gotten to know this guy pretty well. Uh, you know, for the last couple of years, we have a little back and forth uh, about different things. He, he got me in, and dug into issue two. I think TiVo was in there as well. That was a wonderful surprise. I think that there may still be copies of Dreamwalker out there. if People decide to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, but, but he dropped a little bit of an MCU bomb. I did not know that he was going to do that. Um, so I've, I've made some notes here. Uh, maybe you'll see a reel or a short of that a little bit later as we try to spread the word of that good news. Um, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me again. If you have a chance, head over to ReggieCollects.com. We have our Kickstarter going on for isolation issue number two, uh, three, sorry, issue number three. For the record, we are going to beat Mikey to the release of issue number three. He beat us to issue number one, but we are going to get him for issue three. Issue three, hopefully, will come out in March especially if you guys support what we are trying to do. I'm going to wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. As always, if you need to reach me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. My body ate itself until it found this passion. They got fat while we starved, but it's power and fasting. Until I turn to ashes, I remain stoic through my rap heroics. I painted 10,000 poems. Then I drank the potion of poetry in motion. I started choking. It was potent. My throat chakra downloaded. Knowledge hungry. I was embarrassed. I could ask my parents for money when I had a full tummy. So I asked for wisdom. Better than crypto. Sweeter than honey. I don't take it for granted. I don't wear capes and masks.